What's up guys, this is episode number 200 and I wanted to say thank you guys so much for all your support over the years. I couldn't have done it without you guys, so thank you, thank you for everything. The community has grown to be an amazing group of people and I can't say thank you enough. It's all because you guys have been showing up and encouraging me to make videos still and basically just making the community a better place. So I'm glad that I'm able to share some of the things that I know with you guys and hopefully help you guys build better stuff and better apps and you know launch a startup or whatever it is you're trying to do. Hopefully I've been able to help you do that. This has been awesome for me and I wanted to say thank you guys for all your support. Um, and just being part of the community. Thank you guys so much. It's been awesome. So this episode we're diving into a new kind of mini series where we're going to talk about doing geolocation and geospatial search and maps. So we're going to talk about geocoding in this episode and we'll talk about search and maps and how all that stuff ties together in future episodes. And of course the foundation for all of this is taking addresses from your users and then getting latitude and longitude that's a thing that we can actually search distances and all that stuff with. So what we're going to be doing is using the Ruby Geocoder gem. This gem actually is really, really awesome. Um, it'll help us do geocoding, so taking an address, converting to lat long, reverse geocoding, going from lat long to an address, and it will do um, IP addresses to a street address, and it will also help us with our database queries. So we can say, for example, in their, their um, docs, they have hotel.near Vancouver, Canada. So if you give it a string of an address um, or a place, it will be able to geocode that and then search your database. So this is doing two things there. It's actually geocoding plus it is also um, doing a database search with the proper latitude and longitude. So that's really cool. And they also provide a bunch of other cool methods like nearbys, which will take a record out of the database and then search for all the nearby other records near that. So that's really cool. And there's a bunch of other ones you can check out as well, but let's dive in to our application. Now what I have here is a Rails app with the CSV file and it's not rendering correctly in Vim, but we have street, city, zip, and state and latitude and longitude for each one of these records. So we have the address split up into different columns and we have the latitude and longitude as well. So what I did was I went in and created a database column or table called transactions. We have street, city, zip, state, and all of that just like we do in the CSV and I'm gonna load all of those in with DB seeds. But we're gonna leave out latitude and longitude and we're gonna let the gem geocode those for us. So what we can do here is run rake db seed to load those into our database and then let's go into our gem file and add the geocoder gem here at the bottom and then we can go run bundle to install that. Now with that installed, we can go to our model transaction.rb and we can add the code to the model so that it knows how to geocode. So geocoded by address is the first line we wanna add. And what this does is it sets up geocoder on this model and it looks at the methods that we have and it says, well, we want to uh, use the address method for that. Now we don't have an address, we have those streets, city, zip, and state uh, columns and they're all separate. Now the geocoder gem wants a single string with the full address in it, which is why we're going to define the address method here and it's going to be the street, city, zip, and state and we're gonna compact that so if any of those are nil we'll leave them out and then we'll join them by commas um, and spaces. And so this is going to create the single string with our address in it to pass over to the geocode gem. So that's all you need to do, but they show you that normally you're gonna want something like after validate. Uh, after validation, you want to geocode. And this is going to basically say, well, if the record is getting saved, then let's geocode it and make sure that we always have an accurate latitude and longitude. This is gonna run every single time that you validate though, so that's not what you always want. 
you're gonna want this to run um, only when it changes, for example. So we'll talk about that in the future, but this is going to give us something that'll work pretty nicely. So let's go into our Rails console and grab the first transaction out of the database. So transaction.first, we have everything in here. Latitude and longitude is nil. If we say t.address, we get that string that we expected. Uh, because that is joining all of those columns together in a single string. And if we call t.geocode, this is going to run that geocoding for us and give us back an array with our latitude and longitude. Now this also has assigned those attributes to latitude and longitude for us. And that means that all we have to do is call t.save to actually save that to our database. Now, one important piece here that I want to talk about before we move on is that it's important for you to generate the geocoder config for your application. So go into your terminal, run that command. It'll create the config initializer it's a geocoder.rb file. In this file, you can configure things like which API you want to look up addresses from or IP addresses. You can turn on HTTPS and so on. And each of these APIs has different limitations or costs depending on what you're using. And all of this stuff is laid out in the services list right here. So street address services, you can look in here and see that, okay, Google has quotas of 2,500 requests per 24 hours up to five a second, all kinds of different options depending on what you look at here. And so this is important to keep in mind because once you deploy this into production, things might be great in development, but you might deploy to production and have too much traffic and just start getting all these errors from these APIs and things will be breaking and that would be very bad. So keep this stuff in mind as you implement this. Now, one of the ways we can help reduce the number of API requests is we can enable caching. And what we can do here is we can just say redis.new, or you can pass in your configuration options here. We're just gonna use the local database. So redis.new will use all the local stuff for us. By turning on cache like this, this is gonna allow us to cache the results from the APIs in the database in a standard way so that when we make a request again, we can check the database in Redis for that result and then use that instead. So this is gonna save us some requests, especially if we're doing duplicate things like maybe the user changed their address and then changed it back to the same thing or whatever. It's going to be the same result and we don't have to hit those APIs. So this can be helpful as well as going into our model for transaction. We can also do after validation geocode if address changed and this would allow us to define a method called address changed and the simple way of doing this is just to say well if street changed or city changed or zip changed or state changed all those active record dirty methods those we can say well if any of those changed then our address has changed from before and our geocoding should happen again. So this is a nice way of doing that so that you can only trigger those geocodes when necessary and reduce some of those API hits as well. Now this isn't probably going to be a huge amount because how many times are your records getting edited, but if you're a reasonable scale, this will definitely help a lot. So now that we've geocoded that first record, we have a latitude and longitude of 38.63 and negative 121.43. And I wanted to check that in our CSV file and see how close that was. So if we pull this up, I have to do a little bit of formatting stuff here so that we can see this a little bit better, but we have 38.631913. And you'll see that we have a slightly different um, latitude, but it's actually really, really close to the same place. But these, as you can tell, are slightly different values than the ones we got. And you can tell that because we geolocated that address as opposed to using the exact latitude and longitude that was given to us in the CSV. So it's kind of cool to see that there's a slight discrepancy 
because any address could be, you know, it's not going to necessarily be the exact center of the property every time. It might be the street address, like right next to the street or something. It may be different locations depending on the address, um, but it'll all be in that general vicinity of that property. So it's kind of cool to see that these numbers are really close, but not actually exactly the same. Now our database still has a bunch of null latitudes and longitudes, and it'd be nice to do a bulk import and geocode of all of those. And what we can do is use a command that comes with the geocoder gem to do that exactly for us. And we don't have to worry about any of those API quotas or memory in our database. So what we can do is paste in the command from the geocoder gem. This rake task is going to take the model name. So ours is transaction. We have a sleep, which is going to sleep a quarter of a second between hitting the API every single time. And then it's only going to load 100 records at a time into memory to uh, geocode those. So it's gonna be memory efficient and it's gonna be nice on our quotas with our geocoder. So if we run this, it's going to take some time, but it's going to do all of those transactions for us. And at the end, we'll have latitudes and longitudes for every record in our database. So the last feature I want to talk about is that this actually also adds some nice features to your models for searching near a string or a latitude and longitude. So this is really cool. If we say transaction.near Sacramento, California, we can run this and it's going to do a pretty complicated little query in our database. You'll see that it's doing um, sine, square root, powers, all kinds of different things um, in giving us our distance and our bearing and all of that stuff. And it will give us the locations that are closest to that, which was uh, also geocoded. So it took a string, it geocoded that, then it hit our database with our big query there and gave us our results sorted by the nearness to that location. Um, I believe. So that's really, really awesome. And it gives us a bunch of results back and we can see all of those as well. Now, if we were to do another one like this, where we said transaction.near, and this time we passed in an array, we can pass in a latitude and longitude here and it will search by that location. So if you've ever gone to Yelp and you've searched by your current location, that's basically exactly what it's doing here because it's not geolocating anything um, string-wise because you are at a location which it can get from your phone's GPS or from your computer's IP address or however the browser looks that up when you are on your desktop. You can do that current location and it figures out a geolocation for you and then you can feed that in into your search which you can do like so. And of course this one because we searched with the same latitude and longitude as that first record. That first record is the one that becomes our top result there, our first answer, because it is the closest location to itself. So this is already sorted for us by location, which is cool. And then you can use this um, and not even have to make any changes to your database. You don't have to use Elasticsearch if you don't want to. This is all working out of the box, which is really, really handy. So if you wanna get up to speed really quickly with GeoSearch, you can just do this and then put that in your controller and have that take care of everything for you. So this is really awesome and does all kinds of useful little things. Plus, if we were to grab that first transaction um, and we were to go grab for nearbys, this is then going to take that latitude and longitude from there, and then it's going to try and find the ones that are nearest to it, not including itself, of course. So we can see that this first one, um, number 3186, 3132 Clay Street, is the nearest location to our original one. And we'll be able to see this better when we get into maps in the future, we can plot all of these out and we can take these results and see them visually in a map, which is gonna be really neat. So we'll talk about that in a future episode, but for now, we're getting all of this basics figured out pretty nice. So pretty much everything we've talked about is all the basics and the most fundamental way of doing things. The cool part about this gem is that you can go and do all kinds of other options here. For example, you can do reverse geocoding where you take the latitude and longitude and then take the results of that and pipe them back in 
to your database with the street, the city, the state, the zip code, all of that stuff. And the way you can do that is mentioned here in the readme. You can have it take a block and then you grab the first result from that and then you use and assign those attributes appropriately. Now it's a lot simpler when you're doing the opposite way where you're normally doing things to go to latitude and longitude. Those columns are really easy to define, but depending on how you have your addresses set up in your database, that can always be very different. So they have it where you can pass in a block to handle this. And you can do the same thing for regular geocoding, I believe as well, if you wanted to take advantage of grabbing the whole list of results, um, you can do that too. So take a look at that. There's also all kinds of other options you have here, such as searching within a bounding box. So for example, if you're on Yelp and you move the map around and it says, do you wanna redo the search in this area? You can actually grab the corners of that uh, map window. And then if you have those latitudes and longitudes, you can feed those into the search here and you can do the exact same searching um, as Yelp does where it's within that bounding box. So that can be really useful as well. Um, and you have all kinds of other options where, for example, you could have it geocoded by um, the different countries. And so you can use a different service depending on the country, which is really awesome too. So there's all kinds of other options that you can use here. I just wanted to introduce you to the basics of all of this because you can go in really deep if you need to, um, if you're trying to build something really complicated like a Yelp or Airbnb where this is the most important feature of your service, then go for it. But we just need the basics and to get there, all we have to do is tell it what string for the address that we want to uh, geocode and we're done. So this works really nicely. We even get a basic search for it, which is incredibly cool. And we now can then move on to visualizing this stuff and connecting our controllers with the maps and doing our search properly and all of that. So the next episodes, we're gonna talk about the various types of search and how to visualize the stuff on Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps or Leaflet.js or whatever we end up using. But until then, I will talk to you later. Peace.